Hello viewers! Welcome back for the second part of my requested Azumanga Daioh review. Year 2 covers episodes 10 through 19. It's the longest year, but it may turn out to be the shortest review. Or the choppiest, at least. I didn't feel like I had much of anything to say about most of it, which in itself is something I'll talk about, but by the end there were some key things about their second year that stood out to me. The biggest event of Season 2 is undoubtedly the inclusion of Kagura. She was actually introduced back in Year 1, albeit briefly. I mentioned that our class's teacher has a rivalry with the gym teacher, who's an old college friend of hers. Kagura was the most athletic student in her class, the only real threat to Sakaki during the sports festival competitions. Year 2 opens up with Osaka worrying about the group possibly being split up by the new class assignments, but Miss Yukari manages to fix the roster somehow so that she gets the exact class she had last year, plus Kagura. Who I have mixed feelings about? Kagura is basically Tomo, only a little more aggressive. They even look the most alike. She's very enthusiastic about being Sakaki's rival, but completely tone-deaf to Sakaki having no interest in that rivalry. And it doesn't feel like their differences are really acknowledged at any point. I definitely felt like Kagura realized, after a while, that she and Sakaki weren't on the same wavelength like she'd thought, and the amount of time she spends pestering Sakaki decreases a lot over time. But I also felt like we were missing a scene where they actually talk about it or something. It feels so cruel to describe her as a waste of screen time, but Kagura really didn't bring anything to the group for me until almost the very end. With her personality space already basically filled by Tomo, all the time spent establishing Kagura felt like it could have been better spent exploring one of the other characters we already knew. With Kagura's introduction, I've had to accept that Kaorin most likely won't be joining us full time. But the first character to come to mind in that regard was Yomi, who does finally get an episode centered around her with episode 18. I'd been getting increasingly frustrated with how they were handling Yomi's character. She felt like she was just a sounding board for Tomo, a reasonable friend for her to bounce off of and accentuate her own energy. And while it is kind of disappointing that the series is more than half over before she gets her time in the spotlight, I read that the manga didn't actually introduce her by name until Volume 2. Episode 18 did make me see her in a different light. It's the episode where they all come back after the break for New Year's, and Yomi's feeling all sophisticated after a family trip to Hokkaido. It inspires her friends to all want to take a trip of some sort, too, and they decide on a new amusement park. But Yomi buys a guidebook and stays up so late trying to plan out their day ahead of time, that she wakes up with a fever the next morning and has to miss the trip altogether. It was the first time I related to Yomi over anything, because my memories of the conventions I went to with my high school friends, I was always the one doing all the planning. It tended to be just as stressful as it was fun, and watching the group function without her at the park made me realize that I was actually seeing another Kagura situation. I think Yomi never got to shine because her role was already covered. Nine times out of ten, Chio is busy being the responsible one, so Yomi is left without having a role to play. But Chio and Yomi do have a great, artistic moment near the end of the episode, where their three louder friends are all sharing wild, exciting stories about their trip, shouting over each other, and the interaction between Yomi and Chio in the background is done in the style of an old silent film. The episode ends with the first snow of the season, and watching Yomi join in the group's snowball fight, after Tomo had spent the whole episode trying to get her to loosen up. Something about their friendship just clicked for me. It reminded me a little of myself and my own best friend. I can better appreciate how they fit together now. So I'm glad Yomi finally got her moment to shine, but overall I enjoyed Year 2 significantly less than Year 1. Most of it felt like a repeat of what I liked least about the first third of the series. Again, it was one milestone after another, except we've already seen it all once. Some of the episodes were literally just titled Cultural Festival Year 2 and Sports Festival Year 2 and the like. 
They mix it up a little, but I just didn't see the growth I wanted to. Like, their personalities have already been established at this point. It didn't feel like they were really challenged in any way this year. There were no big life lessons learned, it was just the same girls doing the same things all over again with a slight twist. It felt repetitive. I didn't have much to say about most of this year. However, I'm actually really optimistic about year three. Once again, the year was left off on a really good note. Episode 19 is a very quiet episode that gets the girls to reflect on some things. The main five stay behind way later than they usually would, just hanging out with Yomi in the library, chatting about nothing in particular. And when they go to leave, they see Kagura is still at the school too, jogging around the track. They have this brief little conversation about how she's hoping to qualify for the swim team's nationals this year. And it really puts some things into perspective for me. And for them, too, you can tell. Kagura is the only one with any sort of specific drive. Those little forms they had to fill out about goals for the future haven't been revisited since, like, episode one. And even then, it was really only used as a way to show Sakaki's personality was softer than you might think. But year three is where the big life changes will be right in their faces. I don't see any way a show about high school could just not address that. And this last episode was a lot more reflective than usual. I think that could be a really good indication of what's to come. I'm looking forward to seeing the last act of this series. The next review will be the one where I get to bring together my thoughts on the whole experience. It's been different for me, having to cut off that thought process at these year-end marks when the anime itself didn't really intend to have that stopping point. I'm looking forward to being able to know this series as a whole. Thank you for watching.